<laughs> Come on, shout it out, shout Welcome it out. To Welcome to all. What up? What up? <laughs> Salutations. Peace. Peace. Come on, y'all. Let me see it. Let me see it. Peace. Peace. Shalom. 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 Assalamu all right, all right. I think we're ready. We got all, the bases all the bases covered. Yeah. Well, we are here. Yes. And I believe we're ready. You ready? Born ready. Ready? Born ready. I like that. All right, I like that. So we are going to start prayer. And whatever you choose to remain seated, to stand. Um, you make the choice. So God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, through prayer we pronounce and decree a third day breaking. We loudly, boldly, as you said, to come boldly before your throne. You said to proclaim liberty. We boldly proclaim a third day breaking. Right. As this is a prayer of reflection. I reflect on June 1st, 1921, which was 99 years ago, that my people suffered massive loss that was beyond words and description. The destruction of Black Wall Street mm. left families, homes, entrepreneurs, educators, children, churches, markets, visionaries, leaders, and a unified people. On June 1st, just three days ago, George Floyd's brother, mm. Terrence, visited the site where he was murdered by who sworn to protect. Here it is again that, way, that the ways of the oppressor has caused the breaking and shattering of glass within our communities, mm. widening the food deserts, access to basic human needs. Mm. We stand and stand. decree a third day breaking. Come on now. We acknowledge you in all of our ways, knowing that you will direct our path. We appreciate all who are drawn here today with their expression of who you are. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 41 says, keep silence before me, O land islands, and let the people renew their strength. Mm. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. Who raised up the righteous man from the east, called him to his foot, gave the nations before him and made him rule over kings. He gave them as the dust of his sword and as driven stuttle to his bow. He pursued them and passed mm. safely, even by the way he had not gone with his feet. Who hath wrought and done it in this time of prayer, calling the generations from the beginning. We stand in solidarity. You, yes. the Lord, is the first and the last. It is you that have made us and not we ourselves. As your word says, the isles saw it and feared. The ends of the earth were afraid, drew near and came. Hmm. They helped everyone his neighbor. Everyone said to his brother, be of good courage. I decree and declare as it says in your holy word that the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith and he that smoothed it with the hammer, him that smote the anvil, saying, It is ready to the soldering. And he fastened it with nails, that it should not be moved. But thou, Israel, art my servant, hmm. Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend, thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, Thou art my servant. I have chosen thee, not cast thee away. Fear thou not.
for I am with thee. Hmm. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Oh, yeah. I will strengthen thee. Yes. Yay! Yes. I will help thee. Yes. Yay! I will uphold thee yes. with the right hand of my righteous. Come on now. Keep us forever in the path. We pray, yes. lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee, lest our hearts drunk with wine of the world, we forget thee, shadow beneath thy hand. May we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land. And we decree and declare a third day breaking yes. across the city of Chicago, beyond, Say. within, and without this nation. Hmm. In the great and mighty name of Yahshua, Yeshua. Hamashiach, Yeshua. the black Messiah, yeah, yeah. we say amen. 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 And I say. And I say. Yeah. Okay. You got water? You got water? You got water? Please, after. Just before you it's, have it's after. We're going to add in libation. You write after libation. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Excellent. 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 I said good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. That's better. I thought I was, I thought I had come lost on, my hearing on, or something. On. Libation is a tradition of our people to call forth the ancestors to be with us as we walk through this valley of death. Uh, it's, it's personal and it's collective. So if um, for those, we pour this libation for all those who resisted uh, the incoming invaders on our continent called Africa. Ashe. Ashe. We call upon those who resisted when they established what they called the slave trade. I say, we, we, we call on those, the spirit of those who resisted evil, chaos and confusion, and sought moments where we could come together as one people. I say, the, the personal names that you have, call on them out loud or to yourself and remind yourself that they all gave so we could be here today. I say, Kalani Jackson. Henry English. Mm -hmm. Dr. Francis Quest Wilson. Dr. Francis Quest Wilson. Ashe. Ashe. Morgan Carter. Ashe. Oh, yeah. Morgan Carter. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, and, and any personal family members? Ashe. 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 For all those those names that we call and all those names that we don't call, let them be here with us. Let us journey forward in this in this day of confusion of two pandemics, one biological, the other cultural. Let us stand firm in our culture and learn the lessons that come before us on this day. Hotep, Hotep. Ashe, Ashe. Hedy, H E R I, Harry. You know, like you say, Harry Clinton. Asante son, the ancestors are here. I, I messed it up. Was it my fault? It was Sister Jacqueline. <laughs> no, no, I, I pretty much got it. Hi, everybody, you doing? Oh, you talking about this? Don't, don't worry about this thing. How y'all doing? It's good to see y'all, um, everybody. I don't know why he moved his mic up higher, knowing that I was up next. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. All right. So uh, what I come to do is uh, I come to give you guys an affirmation. So everybody that can, if you could please stand up. 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 So this is the affirmation we've been doing at ABJ maybe about since 2016. Yeah. Uh, you from O'Keefe Elementary uh, School helped me create this affirmation uh, when I was a teacher assistant there. Um, so I want you to say this affirmation. I want you to believe it for yourself. I want you to receive it. This is kind of my little bitty prayer. You can take this affirmation with you throughout this city of Chicago 
wherever you are, you can say it to yourself in the morning, kind of get your day started. Let me hear you say, ho! Ho! I can't really hear you. Y'all talking like y'all ain't from Chicago. Let me hear you say, ho! Ho! Say, ho! Ho! All right, let's go. Say, I love myself. I love myself. I love my... Hold on, my bad. The mic brother. had messed my... up. I'm going to do it again. My bad, my bad. We love you, brother. I love you too, man. It's so beautiful. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I love myself. I love myself. I love my brother. I love my brother. I love my community. I love my community. I respect myself. I respect myself. I respect my brother. I respect my brother. I respect my community. I respect my community. I live with reason. I live with reason. I live with reason. I live with reason. And my reason to live. And my, my reason, reason to, live to live is love, is love and, respect. and respect. Chicago, give it up for yourselves. Y'all look beautiful. Thank y'all. Let's go. Yeah, take your seats. Take your seats. Thank you. The ancestors are here. To God be the glory. We are here, you all. We are here doing our thing. Yes, yes. I'm going to ask if you could bring the, um, the sanitizer. Is there a way to control this thing? It's too heavy. The, the, the people that made it too heavy for it. Too heavy for the stand. Too heavy for the stand. I kind of like that. That reminded me of us. Too heavy for the stand. Somebody ought to say too heavy for the stand. Too heavy for the stand. Too heavy for the stand. Yeah, I like that. We'll, we'll figure out what it means later, but I like the way it sounds. Too heavy for the stand. Yeah. I want to thank everyone for coming out here today. And I, I just love the spirit in the room. I'm going to call it in the room. Most of you came out here and figured out, oh, I know her. I know him. You know that person? Man, I love the village. I love the village. I'm Pastor Victoria C. Brady, President, CEO of Annie B. Jones Community Services, and also pastor and founder of Restoring Hope Ministries International. Yeah. And I'd like to welcome you, welcome you, welcome! Yeah. I can't wait till I learn more of my mother tongue. I can't wait! So somebody give me something to say. Give me, give me something in Swahili. Drumbo CC. Drumbo CC, what I just say. <laughs> Ooh, Drumbo CC, welcome you found your family. Come on, y'all. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. So I asked some of the brightest and best in our city to please let's work together on putting together a, com a press conference so that we could just talk to amongst ourselves and talk to our people. And in the ancestral call to the village, we call it, we have agreed. So because we have agreed, we are here tonight. Yes. Because we have agreed, we are here tonight. And we're here to talk to ourselves, our people, and to do a check-in with one another. I looked at a lot of the press conferences. I've seen quite a few, many of them. And at first I was really I was kind of wrapped up into these different press conferences pertaining to everything that's been going on. And it dawned on me, I'm like, Big Mama's, I haven't seen Big Mama yet. I had not heard the, vo the, the voice of the black woman from the community. Now, Mayor Lightfoot is a black woman, and she's making that clear. These particular uh, press conferences were put together by the city. And so, yes, she is a black woman, but I said, but we need to do something. We need our own press conference. We need to check in with ourselves. We need a boots on the ground press conference and we need big mama to show up. So because we have agreed, we're here tonight to talk about ourselves. And what we want you to know in the, wor in the words of Sister Cecile is that we love you. That's the first thing we wanna say. We want to let you know, our young people, young adults, millennials, that we love you. Yeah. Don't we love them, you all? Yeah. 
We love you. And you don't even know the depth of the love that we have for you. There's a scripture that says, bring Jacob home to me. So we want you to let you know that we're coming for you, Jacob. We're coming for you, Jacob. We're coming for you, Jacob. We're reclaiming the love in the village. Because can't nobody love like us. There's not a love on a planet like the love of a black man and a black woman. So Jacob, I hope you can hear us because we're coming for you with love. We're coming to reclaim our own. I want to thank the third district and I don't care who says what, you can send me whatever notes you want to send. But like I told them, when the barber got killed, I'm not going to be your friend today and when something go down, unless I know you wrong, when something go down, then I'm going to turn my back seat. Because back in the day on 50, 5100 South State Street, we called that being two-faced. Yeah. And I ain't going to be two-faced. I want to thank Sergeant Wilson and Officer Lee for coming out and supporting us tonight. Yeah. Woo! And I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I got a problem with every time we look at the media, when it's our officers, our black officers doing something positive, we rarely get to see it. Yeah. We rarely get to see it. We interact with these officers and officers like them every day, but we don't see that. Let me not get ahead of myself, but I want you to know that we appreciate you. I have a family member that gave his life as an officer. So I understand what you give up and what you do every day. Three, three, four days, three months away from his retirement, uh, military, everything. And he was taken away from us by the gun of a teenager while on duty. So I do understand. But what I want to say you all, and I hope that you're listening, young people, adults, all of us, that it's time for us to turn it within. It's time for us to turn it within. I am tired of hearing about us from others. Everybody want to talk about us. We're going to talk about ourselves. But I have a question for you as I begin. It dawned on me that this police officer, he literally as we know, put his knee in the neck of this brother. To be honest with you, the first time I saw it, I didn't even realize that it was George Floyd. I didn't didn't even know what it was because the brothers and sisters, we send each other stuff all day long. All throughout the day, we're getting texts and pictures and, and YouTube. So honestly, I didn't know what it was. I really didn't. But what I remembered is that this is something else. I said... I hear people saying, yo, G, let him go, let him up. You can at least loosen your grip. Again, I didn't know what it was. So I found out later that it was actually our brother George Floyd. And I believe it might have been a day later, I reached out to the ABJ Millennial Tribe. I sent them a a text and I said, I wonder if this is a, a ploy to draw us back out. To draw us out because... When you think about this thing, it doesn't make sense to me. I don't know about you, but it doesn't make sense to me that this officer, knowing that he was being recorded, knowing that he was destroying the life of this black man, he continued to do what he was doing. And some may say, well, you know, he's ar- he was arrogant. He thought he could get away with it. I- I'm not banned that. I'm not banned that this this man went extremely public. He went public with what he did. So what I want to say to the black community is that I want us to think about this a bit more. Let's look at this thing. I, I, I wonder, was somebody trying to start some type of a race war? Was somebody trying to instigate some type of uh, 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 outcry from the black community. They knew we had been in the house two, three months, and they knew that there was a lot of pent-up anger. They knew these things. So for me, it becomes a setup. I believe that the black community 
has got played. Not only did we lose a black man, but I believe that the so-called powers to be is once again playing games with the minds of black folk. Let me tell you something, if you boil in a pot of soup, and I don't really like cooking, I'm gonna tell you that right now, but I respect it because you can learn a lot, Brother Mano. So I thought about this thing, I said, so if you got a pot of soup on, and it's starting to boil, and it's already boiling, it's coming to the boiling point, but then you decide, I'm gonna turn the flame up. I know you already boiling, cause you been, first you were simmering, now you're boiling, now, you, now you're really boiling up, and I come along, and I, with my instigating self, I say, okay, I'm gonna turn this fire up because I just wanna see what she's gonna do. Eventually, it's gonna boil over. It's gonna boil all over onto the stove. So I believe that there are other people that are instigating and invoking certain images and putting certain things in place so that we can disrupt so that they can have an excuse for bringing the military to our streets for bringing the National Guard to our streets. I'm talking as loud as I can. Yes, I am. We got to look, young people. We have to look a little bit deeper. This is the beloved community. This is our beloved community. And we got to understand who we're dealing with. We must understand who we are dealing with. We have to handle ourselves a different way now. We have to, have, we have to handle ourselves in a, in a spiritual way, intellectual way. We have to be smart about these things. We can't just go off like Lear Jets because somebody else says so. So this is an evening for us to go within ourselves to call ourselves in order, to call ourselves to be the peacemakers and peace builders that I know us to be. And stop getting on the agenda of other people. Don't be a puppet for other people. We're bigger than that. So we gotta turn this thing to self-love. And as I thought about this thing, I said the voice of the black woman is not present. I didn't hear from the black woman. I saw after I sent an email about that, the next press conference I did see uh, two women, two black women that have a small business. And then I saw a black woman from the west side and that was beautiful. That was a beautiful thing. But that was their press conference. That was their press, the, the, the city's press conference. This is our press conference. And we need to know that the mamas of the village are here. The daddies of the village are here. We are one village. And we have come tonight to reclaim our own. We will not sit back and let the irritants and irritators irritate you so much that you keep breaking glass and you keep breaking things so much so that they now have an excuse to bring the military in on you that they can then justify what we did, what we had to do. Oh, heck no. You will not be bringing the military in on our young people. You will not do it because you won't have a reason to. We will bring ourselves into order. Yes. And speaking of broken glass, yes, that's right. Broken glass represents every crash, crash, crash. Every crash is a, is, a, is a pain. Every crash is an outcry. Every crash is anguish. Every cry is a sense of hopelessness. So yes, they out there busting up glass because people refuse to listen. And we think we are, we, we, so, we, so, we so good, we think we listening, and we ain't even paying attention. So yes, we have a lot to rebuild, we have a lot to recover, and I'm tired of talking about other people, I'm gonna be honest with you, all I wanna do is talk about us. Amen. I wanna talk about us, the people of soul, and what we are going to do. We have the task of rebuilding our own community. We have a lot of work to do, but we can do it. We can stand together and we can do this thing. 
The three things I want to say is our message to you young people in the community is that we love you and we will operate in love. Even Jesus called when he was asked what, is the, what are the two greatest commandments, he said the first one is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul and all your might. And the second one is like unto it, to love your neighbor as yourself. So even Yeshua, even Yeshua makes it clear that there's nothing wrong with loving on yourself first. Because if you're going to love your neighbor, you going to love the ones closest to you first. You're going to love Big Mama next door. You're going to love Aunt Sarah down the hall. You're going to love on yourself first. And then you catch up with all them other people. So we're going to follow Yeshua model, the model of love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't, if you don't understand that we have permission because every other community, which I hate talking about other people, other communities, but I'm only making a point. They are truly loving on themselves. I'm told that while we had broken glass and destruction over here, they was over there doing business in Oak Lawn. Nothing shut down, doing business. So love your neighbor as yourself. And who is your neighbor? Your neighbor is the person right next to you, right here, right now. And what I wanna say, that was to us. That's the call for us, to the city and all of the other uh, so-called government levels of, of influence, we want to be made whole. We want to be made whole. If you want to figure out what to do with us, then make us whole and watch what we do. Watch it. And the third thing, the third thing is that we got to do something about the summer. The summer is coming. The summer is coming. And we cannot, we cannot go another summer shooting up ourselves and shooting up each other. All these military style weapons showing up in our community. Military style weapons. And you can't say it's for hunting because I'm not a hunter, but I heard somebody say that a hunt is a one shot kill. So you don't even need a magazine clip to kill a deer. So nobody's trying to take away your, admit, your right to bear arms. But what we're saying is in our community, we have, got, we have got to put the guns down. And I have never said those words publicly because I get tired of people telling us what we got to stop doing. You got to stop doing this, stop doing that. You tell them, we tell young people every day, stop doing this, stop doing that. Go over here, go over there, don't do this, don't do that. But today I am saying and asking our young people, we cannot, we're already under extermination. We're already under genocide. We are already in jeopardy. We are already being threatened, COVID viruses, pandemics, all these things. But if we're going to talk about us, then we got to hold ourselves to the task as well. And we have got, we have got to stop killing ourselves. We have got to stop killing one another. Come on, speak to me. This is real talk, y'all. This is Big Mama. And what I say about the community and the Big Mama, when Big Mama show up, some things start happening. That you, may, you may be doing a whole lot of stuff, but when Big Mama hit that door, everything got to stop. Everything got to make way for Big Mama. So we want you to know that the Big Mamas of the community, we're here with you. We love you. We embrace you. We are not going to have you shooting up one another so much so that yet there's another excuse to send in the military. We're going to get rid of all the excuses that someone want to use to harm you, to bring harm to you, because that's who they after, you. So as I close, this man did this thing in the most public way that he could. Didn't even bat an eye. Didn't even flinch. And when somebody do something that loud and on blast to that degree, usually that means there's a different agenda. Yeah. Usually that means there's a hidden agenda that we may not even know about. And this brother, God rest his soul, he was used as a pawn. 
He was used as a pawn. And all you irritators that mixed yourselves in with the protesters and put the bricks in place and set the stage, black folk, let's come out of their experiments now. Let's come out of all these experiments on how we gonna act and what we gonna do. We are the most studied people on the planet. And this COVID thing was partly designed to draw us indoors, to draw us to the internet so that we, they can gauge how we would then use technology and the internet, how we would, how, how would, how would it affect us? So now people inside using the internet, why well, I say this to you all, let's use the internet for the building of the black community. Let's use it to build ourselves up. Stop tearing each other down. You have become on Facebook and all these things, you have become their next experiment. You are literally in their laboratory. You are in their laboratory when you're on the internet. So we're going to use the internet. Let's use it to talk about self-help, black love. Let's use the green dollar in the black hand and make it count for us. The green dollar in the black hand and make it count for us. This is about us tonight, you all. This is about our community, our people. I am at ABJ Community Services, 1818 East 71st Street, and we stand ready to partner with you. And we can't do it along as many organizations out here. And we're ready to work with you, young people. We're ready to help you. We help you, ready to help you do the things that you desire to do. So again, thank you for answering the reclaim reclaim and love in our own village. And I'm gonna close with this last thing and I'm done. You ain't the only one been played. You ain't the only one been played. We all done been played at one time or another. I and my mother who have dedicated our lives to serving black people I'm going to go there. Oh, yeah, y'all didn't know I was, but I'm going there. Yes, I am. I told y'all we the most loving people on the planet. And we some forgiving people, too, boy. Oh, we some forgiving, especially when it's, when, it's, when it's not us. We quick to forgive if it's not us. But when it's us, we not so forgiving. I know about being played because I help another organization to come into the community, not into the community, but into the building that we have been in for 21 years. And that same organization then went to the landlord saying, we need more space. They then turned and said that, okay, well, ABJ got to go. ABJ, you got to go. So we got played too. We do get played. So Everybody that show up in your black, in your protests, everybody that show up next to you, appearing, appearing to be good, wolves dressed like sheep, you better know who you with. And this is why I'm telling you, let's turn it within ourselves. Because if you turn it within ourselves and we can do, do the real version of black on black love, then you don't have to try to figure out who's who. You don't have to try to figure that out. You know that you're working with people who love you. You know you're working with people who support you. You know what you're getting. So yeah, we've been played. There's a lot of tricking going on and a lot of puppeteering going on, but we're gonna wake up, community. We're gonna wake up, yes. we're gonna wake up, yes. and we're gonna do some Ubuntu. Ubuntu. I am because you are. Say it with me. Ubuntu. 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 I am because you are. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. Let's do this thing, black community. This is for us. No, sir. At the end, please, sir. Thank you. Who's on the sheet next? Oh, you have it. It's right here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Come on, Dr. Gail Fraser, Pastor Dr. Gail Fraser, another big mama in the community. Come on, give it up for you all. Yeah. Woo. Yeah.
Hey, I'm telling you, soul sister. I'm telling you, make it plain. Let's give another hand praise for that message because God is good. You better know he is. This is divine providence, you all. Anybody who knows me, they know I always talk about divine providence. And because you understand divine providence, you understand that this is the season and the timing for black folk, okay, to progress and to go forth. Not talking about no collaborative or whatever. People of color, stuff. I'm talking about black folk. Come on. And I want to say that clearly because our message is always shrouded under some other type of umbrella. That's That's and so as a result of that, we always get pushed to the curb. Yeah. Now, when we start talking like this, folks say we preach and hate. Okay? But the bottom line is this is love as Pastor Victoria has already said. We speak out of love. We are people of peace. Yes, we Regardless are. as to what it appears to be on the news, Right. That, of course, we don't own, okay? On, we own no on. stations. So, of course, we know they, uh, they weave and they web these, these stories around pertaining to us. And we, un unfortunately, because we don't know anything else but watching the news, we don't do our own research. And everybody else is believing the lie that come has on, been on, uh, spawned by the enemy, okay? <clears throat> so <clears throat> we can't walk in darkness. Now, I represent the National Black Agenda Consortium. Mm -hmm. And I want to let everybody know, we got a black agenda, y'all. Yeah. Folks keep going around saying it's no black agenda. It's a black agenda. Come on, okay, man. and I want to say this because we need to know that we have things already in place. All we got to do is follow the script. Okay, you hear people say all the time, why reinvent the wheel? The question is, why do we reinvent the wheel? The black agenda is a combination of several agendas that have been written by previous generations of folks, and we've come together with subject matter experts, some of them are in the crowd right now, and we wrote a comprehensive plan for what we need to do. We're not involved in schisms. We work as one. When we came together and worked on the black agenda, we called out the community. We went and we met at uh, uh, the mosque over there, um, uh, a mosque on 70, yeah, Mosque Merriam, and we met there consistently for months to make sure this thing was woven together. We also have an organization that came out of the National Black Agenda Consortium, which is the Coalition of Black Community Organizations. Now, I'm saying this so that you know and you will not continue to believe what's been said about we have no black agenda. As a matter of fact, all you have to do is go online. It's about 50 or 60 pages, but it's broken down concisely to let us know what exactly we need to do. It talks about community responsibility. Mm -hmm. It talks about political pol politicians, uh, the legislative component, and it also talks about what we can do as individuals. And so the point that we have to understand as we come together as a family, we come in love. Everything we do is woven in love. Because without love, we will not be able to do the things that we do. And as Pastor Victoria already eloquently said, we don't operate in hate. Right. We don't operate in hate. That's but right. when we speak the truth, and I believe in the word of God said to cry aloud and spare not. That's my page. I'm on the cry aloud, spare not page. That That's means right. I'm going to put it out there. Right. I'm going to put it out there and say, yeah, this is what that devil did. Yep. Okay? Yep. And when you say this is what that devil did, folks say you hating. No, you call a thing a thing. Call a thing. Okay? You call a thing a Come thing. On. Come on. Come and because we have a history of all of the things that's been done against us, that's not spewing hate, that's telling the truth. Well, and so we can't continue to walk in darkness and pretend because we know that we are one of the most loving people, as Pastor Victoria already said, on the planet. Right. Folks shoot you down and you automatically, I forgive you. Right. I, because we've been trained to do that. We've been trained to forgive even though folks ain't asking for forgiveness. Well, we have been trained to do yeah. these things and because of that, we continue to go around in circles. But divine providence says today that we're not doing that anymore. Come on now. Come on. Divine providence, Come on. and when you have wisdom and you understand the hand of God, then you also understand that God is moving in the midst. He's not caught at unawares over this. 
He's not caught at unawares, but he's given us an opportunity to get this thing together. He's given us an opportunity. So when we look at the black agenda, we see things as pertaining to education. We have the education component there. We have reparations. Brother Cam, he's written the reparation components. We got Sister Cecile who worked diligently to do our relationship with the mother continent, Africa. Okay? We are connected. We are connected. We got Brother Clyde, who's been an excellent, he, he's with the UNIA. He's a contributor. We have several contributors out here who have labored. Brother Yusufu, we have information in there about mass incarceration and our demands. Okay? So we're not sitting up here begging anybody for anything. We're telling it this is the way it is because this is the way it is. And because we are people of faith, and because we know the power of God, and because we believe in what his word says, Says. He said and he promised us that he was going to restore the years that the canker worm, palmer worm, locust, and caterpillar have eaten. He also told us to pursue, overtake, and recover all. That means everything that the enemy has stolen. And when a thief be caught, the word of God says that thief got a payback sevenfold. So we're talking about exponential return. So we don't have to go around kowtowing down. We don't have to go around believing the lies and the hypes that's put out there. As Pastor Victoria already said, we walk in love. The battle over us is love. We love one and we're not operating in hate. Okay? We are not operating in hate. So when we understand this, as we come together, we come together as a unit. And we know when the people become one, it's nothing that's impossible. On, we man. walk in the impossibility. We operate in the impossibility anointing. And we decree things and it's established. So even now we speak to the heavenlies and we command that they line up. Yeah. We're not asking it. We command that the heavenlies yeah. line up yeah. with what we're talking about today. Because we're not going back to slavery. Oh, okay? We ain't going back to slavery. So every trap and every that the enemy has set it's going to turn back on him and it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter what color you are but it's coming back because if you dig a ditch for somebody else you dig it for yourself and so we need to understand today it's a new sheriff in town Come on, a new sheriff in town today big mama in the house thank you very much <laughs> Somebody ought to say, Big Mama! Big, Big Mama! Mama! That was kind of weak. Come on, y'all say, Big Mama! <laughs> Big Mama! I love it, I love it, I love it. Wow! Oh, yeah, Ooh, yeah, that's yeah. heavy, y'all. Y'all know how heavy you are? My goodness. Well, I have a Big Mama story. Now, this was, um, this happens some, I don't know, I think so. Okay. This happened some years ago. Um, I had come up from work, pulled up to my house from work, um, and I sent my family in the house. It was bitter cold outside. I mean, you know what bitter cold means here. But I sent my family in the house, and I had that motherly uh, pastoral instinct that a young man was standing on the streets, and it, again, it was bitter cold. And I sent, once again, sent my family to the house, and I went to talk to him, and my family was like, no, don't, don't talk to him, don't talk to him. They knew who he was. But my instinct said to talk to this brother. So I went over to him, and I said, hey, brother, what's up? Why are you out here? It's like 30 below. What's going on with you? And he's like, um, he really didn't say much. But I said, what's going on? Why are, you, why are you out here? I said, well, you know what? You don't even have to tell me. I know why you out here. I already know, but what I want to ask you is, what do you really want to be doing? He was taken off guard. He said, well, ain't too many people talk to me when they come by here. I said, but what, are you, what is it that you really, really want to be doing? Um, and then he said, well, you know, I'm just trying to do what I got to do, ma'am. Take care of my people, ma'am. I'm just doing what I got to do. I said, okay, but what do you really want to be doing? And he said, I really want to be doing construction. And I immediately said, well, there's a man in my church that owns his own um, air conditioning business. Maybe that ties in. I don't know. I really don't know. But I can talk to him and try and get you connected. And then he said, well, I ain't done it in a while, you know. And then I said, well, let's, let's talk about it. 
So he stood out there and I said, I see you every day. I see you every single day. And I knew the day was coming that I will have the courage to talk to you. I said, now I don't know you. And I ain't trying to bother you. I ain't trying to do nothing. I ain't trying to stop what you're doing or whatever. But I want to let you know there's more, you, there's more in you. There's more in you. And I see it. So then he's looking at me. He kind of stood back like this. And I said, and again, I ain't trying to cause no drama for you. I ain't trying to do none of that, but I know there's greater in you. So then um, I began to talk to him more. Then I said, well, what about school? Have you tried that? He said, I'm trying to get an Ella Harvey, but they're making it hard for me. I said, okay, so you missing paperwork or what's going on with that? So then we talked about that. And I said, well, if you want to go, I'll go with you. Now again, I don't know you, but I'll go with you because I believe in you. And I said, I've been seeing you every single day in that spot right there. You hold it down your spot. You hold it down your square. I see you. But today was a day for me to say something to you because I love you too much. So then after that, I said, oh, wait a minute. By the way, how is your mother? That man, young man's eyes welled up with tears. And he said, my mama is sick. My mama is sick. I said, I knew there's something else in there. I said, I'll tell you what. I'll pray for you. We're going to pray. We can pray right now if you want to. No, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I said, all right, I got your mom in prayer. She need anything or where is she? I said, where you live at? So he pointed out where he live. And I said, well, I live right there. And I ain't had it from you. I live right there. And if you need something, just come over there because it's greater in you. You can do, you, this is not you. This is not you. This is a get, you just getting by on this. This ain't really who you are, man. Come on. And I began to break it down. I was like, man, come on, man. You ain't got to go out like this, man. Come on, man. You better than this. And I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to prove it to you. And I'm here with you. So we just, um, and then right before I got, my family was looking out the window and was like wondering what's going on with me and what's wrong with me. But it's, that's, it's just that motherly courage, that motherly, that godly courage that just pushes you out there and gives you that courage and you can step to anybody. And I have so many stories that I can't tell them all, but I got so many tons of stories. But I believe when the women come out, when mama comes out, big mama comes out, big mama said, let me handle this. So that's what Pastor Victoria said today. We got this. We got this. Can I ask all the mothers or the sisters that believe in this, can you just stand up on your feet? Let's just see where you are. Let's just see who you are and where you are. Take the road. Take the road. Yeah. You believe that? Yeah. We ready? We ready? We re we oh, somebody just said we've been ready. Y'all been ready? Yes, ma'am. Well, y'all, it's so many more stories. I wish I could tell y'all some of the other ones, but we just don't have that kind of time today. But I love you, and I'm so glad we're doing this. Thank you, Pastor Victoria. Yes, yes. You point to Minister Yashua, where are you? Ashe. <laughs> you want me to hold this for you? No. It, it stands on its own. There we go. Thank you. Greetings, everyone. Greetings. In the name of the everlasting Father, He that causes all that exists to exist, He that is self existent. He who directs the sonships of millions and trillions of years, and he who's made time the seed of the universe. He's known among the ancient Kemites or the indigenous people of Africa as Amin Ra Aten. Among the Hebrews is Ansaf, Yahweh, and Elohim. Among the Christians is Lord God and Jehovah. And among the Muslim and the Islamic world is Allah, the one God. But I bear witness that all of these names refer to the same, one almighty God. And it's to him whom I give reverence and to whom I submit. I am Brother Minister Yashua Hakeem Aten, Economic Minister of the Temple of Mercy Association under the leadership and guidance of Brother Minister Rahim Kassid Aten, our co-founder, Minister Omari Jahi Aten, and our First Lady, Sister Makita Aisha Aten. I'm tasked with the opportunity to talk to us about rebuilding our communities. And rebuilding our communities looks like this. As often as you can, Put your dollars in another black hand. I said as often as you can, put those dollars in another black hand. I was part of a movement called Mata, 
And I don't know if many of you are familiar with Monta, but it was an alternative channel of distribution that was founded by a man named Ken Bridges. Ken Bridges was a graduate of the Warden School of Business. He was the top producer in Amway. He made millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. And when he decided to create his own product to go into Amway distribution, he found racism. And so he was forced to create his own channel of distribution that was going to be friendly to us where we could take our products and services and distribute them among ourselves. Now, see, most of us are only familiar with buying and selling. But there's a whole nother level when you start manufacturing and creating products because that's where the real job creation comes in. They tell me the average household in America uses about 15 rolls of toilet paper. Does anybody out here not use toilet paper? But did you all know that we had the freedom toilet paper? And you didn't have to go to the store to get it. You would have called us and we would have delivered it to your door. Did you all know we had the true laundry detergent? Right? Manufactured in Atlanta, made by us, for us. It's all natural, don't have no chemicals in it. It's not going to break you out. Your eczema will go away. Your allergies will go away. Your skin rashes will go away. Did you all know we had these products? Apparently not because y'all still giving 88% of Taz income to them. And I'm talking to the sisters because men don't usually buy the laundry detergent, am I correct? So we need you all to start circulating your money among us because this one bottle of laundry detergent is not just laundry detergent for your clothes, but it represents about 15 to 18 jobs. There was a black person that designed this label. There was a black person that put this product together. There was a black person that worked in a fulfillment center, the shipping department, on the receiving end of it. They sold it to a black person and we distributed it. And we create jobs for our youth and opportunities because our youth are in the world's greatest business, like it or not. They just got the worst product. I said our youth are in the world's greatest business, like it or not, they just got the worst product. Drugs and guns is not the only thing that sells in our community. So we have to find products that we can give to our youth so they can sell. These products are distributed by Wholesale Direct to You, and that's the CEO of Wholesale Direct to You right over there, that 17-year-old with the phone. His name is Khalil Lofton. So if you're interested in supporting this movement, I need you to get with him when this is over. Give him your name, your email, and your phone number, and contact him so that he can purchase these products from him. Because as a part of our organization, we put the youth to work. We make them their own CEOs. By the time they're 18, they have their own businesses. They have their own retirement account. They have their own million dollar insurance policies. Black lives ain't gonna start mattering until they start having to cash some checks from killing us. I'll say that again. Black lives won't start mattering until they start having to cash some checks from killing us. So we teach financial education and how to set up your retirement account, how to take care of yourself, how to buy your own property. Because when you buy property in the community, you're less likely to tear it up. I said when you buy property in the community, you're less likely to tear it up than if you're living off of Section 8 and got to pay $30 a month. So we got to have ownership. We got to empower our youth. We got to give them something and stop looking for somebody else to give us what we can give ourselves. Marcus Garvey asked the question, where are the men of big affairs? Well, here's a few of them. Kamos Muhammad out of Baltimore, Maryland. This is another brother out of um, Atlanta, Georgia. So we got our men of big affairs. We got our products. And we need to start circulating our money. Look for somebody that looks like you. And please do me a favor. Stop asking for a discount. We already put the black man's discount in there. We already love you. We didn't put the discount in there. Please stop asking for a discount. Pay what they ask you to pay because you're creating jobs for us. It's a shame that our children should have to grow up and look to another race to employ them, look for another race to educate them, look for another race to feed them, as if we are not the owners and creators of everything on this planet, but yet we don't control none of the consumer spending in our community. We got thousands of elected officials. This is where it counts, y'all. When we got to this country, we own less than one-fourth of one percent of the goods and services distributed in this country. Now, with all the elected officials we got, with President Barack Obama, with the Jessies, with the Farrakhans, with everything else, we still own less than one-fourth of one percent of this country's goods and services. That's where the fight has got to be. It's got to be for the market share in your communities. So when we're talking about rebuilding the community, we got to build a channel of distribution so when the young people create something, we can sell and distribute it and make some money off of it so nobody else can convolute what we're trying to do. So they don't have our children singing about gangster rap. 
we can talk about some things positive because we're distributing those things. And so that's my time. Again, that is our CEO over there. His name is Khalil Lofton. He can be reached at 312-823-9019. Thank you. You can look us up on Facebook, Instagram. It's Wholesale Direct, the number two, Y-O-U. Thank you. burning some of our problem is we be raw 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 and then a month from now a year from now we just forgot and we be right back at square one so we got to keep the same energy that we started with we got to be mad as hell today and mad as hell tomorrow excuse me pastor <laughs> do your thing baby do your thing i'm gonna try it one more time and then i'm gonna do this piece and i'm gonna get out your way okay all right all right all right all right Mr. America. Mono, this for you, man. I'm going to try. Mr. America. Poverty. Poverty being stuffed in the pockets of innocent children whom Mother Africa gave birth could once nourish earth through supplements pouring from her, be from her breast. Innocent poverty being stuffed in the pockets of innocent children whom Mother Africa gave birth, could once nourish earth through supplements pouring from her breast. Her, her baby daddy, a rapist who craves colored flesh. Mr. The, America. Uh, come on. It's a Lady Liberty's platter push. Push. Dreams deferred under the pillow of Langston Hughes. And if they ask you, revolution will not be televised on basic cable. Channel Black Panthers, run and tell men of milk, women of color, children of green cards, run and tell, run and tell, run and tell men of milk, women of color, children of green cards, babies of Angelina Jolie. We, we people, of, people of Walla Millet and fried foods, fi finally free. So I'm a child of Mr. America. Well, my color is a, is crime. a crime. Well, my ancestors paid the cost for their children to do the time. He'll captive our own freedom of this red, white, and blue. Look at his animals, whether the jungle or the zoo. So whether the hood or a jail cell, shoe, we still stuck like glue. And although our feet bear the struggle, we still cannot fit the shoe. And our backs, you with the pain that our ancestors felt, yet they did not have our backs, they, they just, just collected the wealth. You see, the more poor, the more they rejected our health. Passed us right up like we were all stealth. Flew right over and oh, oh no, no help. Nothing in store for us except reloading the, the shelf. shelf. Oh, being a boss, getting beat with no belt. And when Uncle Sam come, you better brace yourself. You can't face yourself because you hate yourself. So how can you love your brother, your sister, your kids, or even your church's mother? I am us. There's, there's life that lives on land and life that lives in water. There's human life, wildlife. Animals stand on four, people stand on two. But we all stand on one round rock we call home. home. Earth is our main address. The grass is our welcome mat. The sun is our lap in the living room. A world full of fruits and vegetables is a refrigerator full of food. Some of God's creation go on a hunt. Some of God's creation eat at Pizza Hut. Come on. Say grace, head bowed and eyes closed shut. Then it's time to clean up. I wash the dishes in the lake. In the restroom, there's a shower like rain. There's a bath like an ocean. Walk, crawl, or swim. Feathers, fur, or skin. There they or them, all that God is, all that I am. All that live and breathe. All that speak, bark, roof, or howl. Hiss, purr, or meow. Roar, snow, or growl. Person, pet, or wild. We are all alike somehow. I am the youth. I am the elder. I am my mother. I am my father. I am the past. 
I am the future. I am the quarterback the NFL refused to play. I am the caravan the USA refused to welcome. I refuse to be a race. I refuse to be an age. I refuse to be a gender. I refuse to be a name. If I am anything, I am us. That was perfect. I like that little fire right there. Well, I, I have to say, um, I taught him everything he know, y'all. <laughs> Come on, Minister Tahaka! Hey! Yeah, well, this is a cross-generational village. That's what it's all about, all the generations represented. So we're going to have Minister Tahaka Sh J. Shakur from the Temple of Mercy Association, Helping Hands, and also an ABJ Millennial Tribe member. Y'all see our shade? Hey. I hold my own mic. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I don't need it. I don't really need to hear it. I'm, I'm, I'm. I know it's gonna, they're gonna still hear it. Trust me. <laughs> With protocol being established, I am Minister Taharka J. Shakur, the Youth Minister of the Temple of Mercy Association, under our leader, teaching God, Minister Raheem Kassad Aten. Without going too in depth in who we are and what we do, I would like to just talk about who we are as a people and what we should be doing at this time when it comes to loving on ourselves. To start off, we understand that we are a people who have been from childhood taught self-hate, taught to despise the skin that we live inside of, to despise our parents, to look and despise our relationships, to despise each other. What we need inside of our community, it is something like a missing ingredient when you go to a fast food restaurant. See, when you're at home and you're eating a home cooked meal, it is not so much the food. It is the reason why your mother or your grandmother's sweet potato pie was the best sweet potato pie you ever ate. It was because she put an ingredient called love in it. See, and that is what we're lacking inside of our community. It is love, love from our big mamas. The, the youth don't think that it is out there. The youth are calling for that love. Yeah. They are calling for that guidance and direction. See, and when we give it to them, when we show it, when we show up for them, we can show out. See, everything that has been going on, it has been a problem, and we see it, but we have to understand that it is just bigger than George Floyd. We have to understand that when these protests started, that there are more black men and black women who have been gunned down continuously by the police since these protests have started. We cannot just understand that this is not just about police brutality. It is about a system called white supremacy, which is anti-blackness, which is anti-black love. See, because in white supremacy, we cannot love ourselves. See, because when we love ourselves, it, it is detrimental to them in a sense. Because when we populate with our, with our own, when we just stick together and grow our communities, we've seen the detriment when there was Black Wall Street, the America went through the Great Depression. I don't think y'all heard that. Yeah, when we had Black Wall Street, well, America was going through the yeah, Great Depression. We See, were. we have to separate. Well, we have to come out of her and understand as long as we are inside, mm -hmm. we will never truly love ourselves. Well, and see, when we talk about the color of love being black, well, when we talk about loving ourselves truly and doing for selves, we can imagine and gentrify our own communities. Yes. We just tore down, but that might have just been the fire of purification. Some of these well, businesses didn't need to be in our community well, anymore. Well, it is the reason why the liquor stores was burned down inside of our community. Well, there was too many of them, too close to our schools. See, there was a different spirit. We cannot be so mad at our children for rioting. There was a different spirit on them. See, when we understand and get into touch, I ain't that loud. Oh, that's the power, brother, the power. <laughs> when we understand where we are, and the fire and the direction of this fire that is burning, we understand that this world is falling. The system of white supremacy is crumbling. 
America the Great, I mean Babylon the Great, is falling. We have to see that this is 2020. This is the year that we as a people have begun to wake up. It is a time for us where we see what is going on to strategize, to organize, and not always be public with what we're doing, not always to show up and bring the media. Sometimes we can't call the, uh, I love that the district is here, but sometimes they can't be in the room. Sometimes we have to understand who can be in the room when we are conversating about what is best for us. We talk about our allies. I am sorry. We have a, can look at history. We have no allies. We have supporters. The only allies we have is the ones that look like us when we look in the mirror. See, when we understand that, we can do more for self. See, when we come out of her, we can be successful. We've seen it happen in history, but we're not taught that history. We're not shown the greatness of who we were before we were slaves. We're not taught who we are now during being American citizens and the great creations and inventions and buildings and architects and streets that we have formed and built and the greatness that we have here. See, now I just want to just share two things. I don't want to take too much time. I just really want to deliver that message. Teach, bro. We have to put the phones down. When I say put the phones down, why are we only recording police brutality when we see it? Why is everybody pulling their phones out when fights are happening? How about we put the phones down and do something? How about we put the phones down and learn something? How about we put the phones down and read something? See, because the time that we are in, we are at war. And we are in the fence and in the middle of a civil war that the white man is fighting within himself. They have had two civil wars in this country. The one we're in and the one, and they said the last one was about us. They wasn't fighting about us. It wasn't to end slavery. Don't think that the white man care about us that much that they gonna fight a war over us. This war ain't about George Floyd. These protests ain't about George Floyd. That is the white man being angry about being shut down inside of their homes. This is the white man being upset about their businesses not being able to be flourishing. This is the white man angry at their president. We are being a fence and we have to come out of her. I leave you in peace. Somebody ought to say crash. That's the broken glass, y'all. Crash. Crash. See, that's what happened when you asked the millennials to speak. If you don't want to hear the truth, then don't invite them. Thank you, Minister Tahaka. Thank you for bringing the truth to the light. All right? We got another young lady that we, I actually just became acquainted with, and she's got, we asked the young people for their solutions, their version of the solutions, and so they have come up with some things, and you've heard some of them already, and now you're going to hear from another young lady. She's going to introduce herself, Tati, Tati uh, Butler. She's going to come and tell you a little bit about herself and some of her solutions. Come on, say Ashe. Ashe. Ashe, and good evening, brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for being here, just to hear me speak, to hear us all speak, to hear us speak for the cause. I appreciate the visitors. I appreciate the supporters as well that have come through. Uh, my name is Tatiana Butler, but I do go by Tati Butler. I work in the community as a youth counselor. I work with your children. I work with our children. I help them with their mental stability. I help them with their emotional stability. And what this and what's going on now? what has erupted over the death and over the murder of our brother George Floyd, but has been long standing ever since our time in this country is really affecting our children. At this point, we really need to have actionable steps for what we want to see what done. Actionable steps is what, what I said. What you say? I said actionable steps I is what we need to work on. Some stuff we gotta do. That's right. We All need right. to work on something that we can see done by the end of 2020, not just when we overcome. That time is done now. It's time for us to actually have some steps. One of the steps that I think we really need to work on when it comes to community policing and the police in general 
This message is not just for CPD, but it's for the police forces all across the nation. And if we're being honest, all across the world, because it's not just black Americans that are being affected. It's all around the world, especially even in Britain and London and Africa, where you see police brutality just on us, just because of who we are, as God made us. We are divine, and it's time for us to have divine steps to bring about our divine future. Yes. One of those is for community policing, we really need to hold these police accountable for how they are restraining us. It makes no sense that a visibly armed white man who can open fire on a crowd of people can be peaceably detained, can be peaceably restrained, who can be brought in, who can even be fed Burger King. But meanwhile, our kids, we're getting shot because of suspicion, because police fear for their lives, but they're the ones armed. It doesn't make sense. The math is adding up. So at this point, we really need to hold them responsible for how they're restraining us, how they are arresting us, if they must arrest us at that. That's something that we can bring to our police departments. That's something that we can bring and talk to police captains about. What is the method by which our cops are detaining us and restraining us? We want to know and we want to enforce it in our communities. On top of that, we just need in general police familiarity. Who is actually policing us? Who's on the beat in our neighborhoods? We need to meet these police officers. I don't think there should be any reason why we shouldn't have a stronger black police presence in the community. And if we're being honest, that's not to excuse black officers either, because many of you are also terrorists to our own brothers and sisters. But what we can do is it, it feels more comfortable to be stopped and to have a black officer coming up on the side than to see white officers coming up. At the very least, we've heard the excuse that we can't supply only black officers for black neighborhoods. At the very least, when they are paired, one of them can be black. If you want to have a non-black officer, he can at least be paired with a black man. We need a stronger black presence. We need to respect these police officers. The reason why they attack us is if, if we're being honest, they don't respect us. So we want to give, if you want a reason for us to respect you, give us a reason to respect you. And outside of that, outside of police familiarity, outside of them also working on how they restrain us, why we, every single protester, every single curfew breaker needs to be released. This can happen at the discretion of the police, and that's what we're calling on. You don't have to charge them. You don't have to put them through a process, which is especially slowed down because of coronavirus, because of everything's going on. You can let these young black boys and black girls go because they're fighting for a cause. And that cause is the reason why we're here. I'm so grateful. Again, go to your local police departments with actionable steps, things that we can see before 2020. These conversations, not only can they happen, but we can make sure that they're done before the year is out. Thank you so much, Ashe. I like that word, actionable, actionable steps. That was a big word for me, y'all, actionable steps. Aren't y'all excited about our young people? The village is alive, y'all. Come on now, we're gonna bring up a fire, fire brother in our community. Brother Cam Howard is gonna introduce himself and he's gonna tell us some things that we need to know. Ashe? What's up, family? It's a pleasure, it's a pleasure. I want to stand in solidarity with everyone and the organizers of this event. But before I share my few comments, I would like for everyone to just have a moment of silence for the transitioning of our Baba, Dr. Conrad Worrell. Ashe. I was asked by someone a couple of days ago when they heard that Dr. Conrad Worrell had transitioned and they didn't know who he was. They asked me, well, can you just name three things that he did? So it was really quick and easy. You know, I said, well, you know, in the 1980s, he organized with the Black United Front and took a million signatures to Geneva and charged this country with genocide. That's big. Not in the age of, as we say, not in the age of social media, as we know that it was done before by our sister Queen Mother Moore, but to do it again in the 1980s. And we've been declaring since we've been here that this country's relationship to us has been one of genocide. Yes. So it wasn't new, but to put our position on the world stage at that time was important and it was powerful. So the second thing I said, well, you know, everybody heard of the Mayor Harold Washington. Uh, he was one of the key strategists for the election of Mayor Harold Washington. 
which was another historic event in the city where the Irish had ran the city for 100 plus years. And Irish has been a key opponent to African progress in this country. Most people don't know that we all say that the police came from the Paddy Patrol during the, uh, the enslavement period. Well, they were trying to put down the African revolutions that were happening all over the Americas, North America, South America, Central America, and in the Caribbean. And so they created in the 1600s and early, and early 1700s this, this concept of pan-whiteness. And this pan-whiteness, they had to bring the Irish in to being white because the Irish wasn't white. The Irish was niggas. They were enslaved. It was later when they reserved the word nigger just for us, but Irish were included. So they had to bring the Irish into the fold of being white, and they made them the overseers, and they made them the patty rollers. If you look, watch the movie Roots, when you see the brother, the, the white boy who, who uh, whooped Kente Kente, you, are, you, are, you will hear his Irish accent. When you look at 12 Years a Slave, the white boy who was trying to whoop Solomon, who he took the whip from, was an Irishman. When you look at Django, when you saw the, the white boy who was, who was bringing all the Africans to the, to, the, to, the, to the port to be traded was an Irishman. They tell the truth, and we don't even know the truth. And the police force in this country grew out of the Paddy Patrollers, out of the Irish inclusion into whiteness. And today, when you see the, the, the police all over this country, they have an Irish presence all over the country today. Look at the, I was watching the news yesterday, and the chief of police of New York, name was Hanrahan. All right? And nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. And so the, 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 the psychology of the police, whether you're black or white, the psychology of policing in this America, in this country, in America, ha has its origin in enslavement. And it has not, the psychology has not changed. The third thing they asked me what the Dr. World did, I said, well, he took four, organized over 400 people and they went to Durban, South Africa in 2001 at the World Conference Against Racism. And it was there where we lobbied the heads of states of 193 countries to have proclaimed that the transatlantic slave trade, slavery, and colonialism were crimes against humanity. And crimes against humanity has no statute of limitations. So if it happened 400 years ago, and the perpetrators are still in existence today, the perpetrators being the United States of America, or the, the uh, United Kingdom, or the Republic of France, or Germany, if they're still in existence today, they're still guilty today. Crimes against humanity are the most egregious crimes that a government can commit against a civilian population. There are corporations that were in existence two, three hundred years ago that are in existence today, they're still guilty under the international law. I spent the last 15 years of my life and tens of thousands of dollars, you know, the Creator has, been, has blessed me to earn a living that I can take care of myself and my children and have a little bit more that I can give to our community. And I spent tens of thousands of my dollars in 15 years fighting for the cause of reparations, for these people to redress in the form of monetary and program, programmatic issues that we can repair ourselves as a people. Not asking them to repair us. We know we need tremendous amount of resources to do the type of repair we need in our community. I want to stop for just a second and thank the hell out of these young brothers and sisters who have been rebelling over these last three or four days. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As I spent this money and spent these years, and I'm with an organization in COBRA, we have about 2,000 members, and, and COBRA's been in existence for 30 years, 32 years, and we've been fighting this issue of reparations, but we got the attention of the legislators in this country, the federal legislators, the state legislators, and the city legislators because of the rebellion of our young brothers and sisters over the last three or four days. We thank you. Today we were at it, today myself and Cecile and a uh, elder white man by the name of Jack McNamara 
We testified before the Health and Human Relations Committee today to have a reparations commission passed in the city of Chicago. There, were, there are 17 members, aldermen, on the city, on the Health and Human Relations Committee. About 15 or 16, about 15 were, were present. 12 of them spoke, white, black, and Hispanic. Fiery on this issue of reparations, in agreement that this city must come to the terms to redress the crimes committed against our people by this city. They're in support of it. And again, we owe these young brothers and sisters, these rebellious black men and young black people, we owe them a debt of gratitude. We talk about all the destruction they've done in our community. And yeah, they did some destruction, and we're we going to have to deal with that. It might take us years to deal with that. But they moved the needle to the repair of our people who are far closer than we have done in the years that we have been organizing. And we, are, we know where thanks are due. And if you hear me say it over and over again, I love and thank our young people. Our rebellious young people, because that's the spirit that I come from. The spirit of revolution, the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of resistance, the spirit of insurgency. And that's what was presented to America over the last week by our people. We got a lot of work to do. The vote is tomorrow. We understand that there was some maneuvering. When you have a committee meeting, you have a vote right afterwards. Why they delay the vote for an old day? We understand that there's some uh, shenanigans going on. But we have to continue to fight. We got to continue to struggle. This is only the first stage. I want everybody else to stand with us, call your aldermen, yes. and make sure that they're voting yes for a reparations commission in the city of Chicago. Thank you. That's an actionable step. If anybody don't have a flag for their car, let me know and I'll give you one. Look, y'all, I thought he had brought some flowers for all the big mamas. I said, ooh, he got flowers for the big mamas. But he got something even better. He's got the flag. He's got our flag for us. Y'all all right out there? Y'all all right? You're not fading away, are you? Yeah, go on and give somebody a long social distancing hug right quick. Get up and take a little stretch. Seriously, get up and take a little stretch break. We almost through our program, but this is important, you all. This is for us. And we don't have to rush when it's for us. And while you're standing, I want to just, uh, um, I'm not sure if we've done it yet, but I definitely want to make sure we know Sister Cecile Johnson. She's a human rights defender. I've never met a human rights defender <laughs> until now, a few years ago. So uh, Sister Cecile, Brother Cam, Dr. Uh, Gail, and many, many others are fighting on so many levels for our people. And this is for the village. And we want you to know, young people, and all people out there, that we are reclaiming our village. This is not just talk. We are doing actionable steps. We are taking actionable steps. And woe unto you if you don't call your alderman and say vote for what is it? Reparations. Reparations. All right. Thank you, Cecile, for all you're doing. And she did help put this together. She wrote the press release and all those things. So let's apply all the big mamas out here, y'all. I know big mama don't look like she used to look, but uh, but we still big mamas. Come on, sister, yeah! <laughs> all praise to the most high that who has uh, or what has created the sun created all of you all. So all your religions don't add up to spirituality of that which created the sun. Religion can divide us. The sun and the planet puts us together. My name is Sister Yah. I'm your favorite community epidemiologist. I come here in peace and love, but I'm here to bring you the health and wellness piece of our program, if you will. The health and wellness is we sick. It ain't just COVID. That pandemic is real. It isn't just the violence. That pandemic is real. 
It is the pandemic of racism that we have not begun to solve. And in my line of business as an epidemiologist, for the community is to tell you where we are health-wise. Y'all, we is sick, and we sick and tired of being sick and tired. In order to get past the sickness that is in our communities, we're gonna have to do some level approaches. What the sister said, actionable steps? Well, there's three level approaches in my world. When you treat something like a disease, you gotta know what you're dealing with. So I have to first talk about who are the people who have the disease, the dis- ease and that is us as black people the dis-ease of racism has made you so sick that even when you get covid unlike the white people who get hit first black people get hit harder when we get hit hard it's because our underlying health conditions are not in the same position as theirs when you hear dr anthony fauci speak from which I have actually met before. I respect science. I am a scientist to my heart. But see, we have a different color eyes. Mine's a brown, his a blue. We look at the life differently. Now we both come to the same science understanding, but our interpretations are different. You know why? He says you need to maintain your immune system. You need to make sure it stays where it's at. And I'm listening to him like, is he crazy? Not that his science is wrong, his interpretation is wrong. We as black people need to build up our immune system. It ain't maintaining it, it's wrong already. Our immune systems are already corrupt. They're already downtrodden. They're already put away because of the stress of racism. See, they don't look at that as a social determinant. I know I'm speaking to some of the professionals out here right now. Social determinants of health means what did the social instruct on your body have? That means from where you went to school to who your mama is. Everything has an impact on your individual body. So the first thing you do with a disease model is you look at the individual body. And right now our individual bodies are not the point it could be we could be so much better the next step for a disease is you look at the society or the community for which is impacting and for us yes COVID is impacting the world that's why it's called pandemic and not epidemic if it would have stayed just in China it would have been an epidemic SARS version one by the way because COVID is SARS if you all didn't know it's, it's a severe acute respiratory disease this is version two version one only stayed in China and then Mars MERS only stayed in mid east so you never heard about it now you over here talking about what's COVID COVID is actually the coronavirus if you will we just shorten it for COVID-19 because it was 2019 before this country had cases coronavirus is not new Coronavirus has been around you all, all your lives. If you look on your Lysol cans, go home and look at your Lysol cans. You're gonna see coronavirus because it is a type of disease which infects your respiratory system. But this is SARS version two. Why is it version two? Because it's a new strand. This strand has never been seen on the planet Earth the way humans are now understanding it, which is why there is no immunity to it. That's a falsity if they told you one. So the bottom line is we got the individual, we got the society, and then the next step is you got to look globally. That's how we solve diseases. I want you all to know that <clears throat> As uh, my mentor is here, um, Dr. Gail Frazier and us on NBAC, the National Black Agenda Consortium, I work on the health and wellness piece. And my charge to you all is a new word if you haven't heard it. That is health equity. Woo! Say health equity. health equity. Health equity means that I don't want to be equally sick to white folks. I'm trying to be the best health that I can. And the only way you can get the best health you can is if you have a health care system that is about you getting better and living longer. Now, that system is not helping black people to live longer. So my charge is we're going to dismantle the system. Now, that's a hard thing for me to say as a scientist. But if it ain't working for you... 
you got to get rid of it. It ain't working for us, y'all. So health equity, then the next step for us as an actionable step is start charging this state, this country, with making our health a priority, and we're not using the system that they have now, this insurance system that don't work. We need to use a universal system that is going to give us outcome measures where our life expectancy is not just equal to theirs, but is better. Health equity. Thank y'all, your favorite community epidemiologist, Sister Yah, and we'll be more on the National Black Agenda. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, my organization is called Tax, the Association of Clinical Trial Service. I am the only black woman in, the, in this uh, state that has their own non-for-profit organization that can talk about clinical trials research. I sit on so many boards for clinical trials, and if you never know what that is, Holla at your girl. This is myself, Sister Yah, with Tax, National Black Agenda, and I'm here in uh, solidarity with ABJ and all the other organizations, Brother Cam, and everybody else that's out here in solidarity, red, black, and green, all day long. Marcus Garvey, I shake. Woo, she can't be the only one, y'all. We're going to have to do some succession planning. We got to get some other ones trained up because we, I, 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 I'm not interested in science. I'm going to just tell you that now. But we got to have some other young people that's interested. Now, see, I said I ne had, had never met a um, human rights defender, and I certainly had never met an epidemiologist. Epidemiologist. I like seeing all y'all teaching me some big words tonight. Don't y'all see that we love y'all in the village? I hope you all are enjoying this in Facebook land because this is all about us. And yes, we can take a couple of hours out of our schedules for us. Now we're going to bring and we're getting, we're winding down. We're going to have a special surprise for you in a few minutes. It's just, it's nothing grand, but it's a special surprise. Right now, though, we're going to bring up the founder of the Temple of Mercy Association. He's going to come in and talk a little bit more about our wellness, but he's also the president of the Black United um, Progress Association that was founded by Dr. Webb Evans. The, um, what do you, how do you say it? The Black, the Black Dollar. The Black Dollar Man, so he said he got me. So let's give it up in a big ashe for Minister Rahim Atan. Y'all repeat after me, Black Power. 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 That's the power to define, the power to develop, and the power to defend that which is in the best interest of black people. We have to begin to define for ourselves what's best for us. In the name of the everlasting Father, he that causes all that exists to exist, he that is self-existent, he who directs the sonships of millions of years, he who made time the seed of the universe, known by so many names, but yet I bear witness that all of those names refer to the same one, Almighty God, and it is to him whom I give reverence and to whom I submit. I boldly proclaim that we are the children of those black men and women who survived the transatlantic slave trade, and that we are that lost 13 tribe born here in North America, and we are of a Nubian comedic lineage. I further proclaim that the blood of all the nations of the world flow through our veins. I greet you all in the ancient but yet holy words of peace in the languages of our fathers, of Hotel. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum. Habaragani. Malafia. And Ashe. All right. Well, I am Brother Minister Ryan said, I think she just introduced me, but I'm also known uh, professionally as a musician um, called the sax preacher you can kind of google me and uh, <laughs> I'm just here to talk a little bit about about health and wealth more so about us being scientists in the laboratories of our own lives instead of letting someone else be scientists on us they say there is no known treatment for this coronavirus. They say they don't know anything as far as 
not only just treating it, but how to cure it. So that means if you go to the hospital, you don't know the difference in the lab coats, whether that person that's over you is a scientist or a doctor. So if they don't know what the treatment is or the cure, then why should you have to be there? There are some things, though, that you can do called prevention, which is now you got to build up your immune system. I want to read something that I got from the Holy Quran, and I read both Holy Quran and Holy Bible. It says, if evil and disbelief exist in the world, we must not be impatient or lose faith. We must recognize that if such things are permitted, they are part of the universal plan and purpose of God, who is all wise, all good, all knowing, but whose wisdom and goodness we cannot fully fathom. Well, they say the virus is man-made. Well, there have been many times in the scriptures where God did things through people. And so even though it's man-made, it's still of God. And all of what you see happening is a universal plan and a universal process. But it's up to you, black man and woman, to see which world and which order and which kingdom will exist after it's all over. Will it be the kingdom of God or will it be the kingdom of the devil? It's up to you. We are the men and women of God. The black man and woman is God. The Bible says, ye are gods, all of you, but children of the most high God. What does that mean? We should eat the food of a God. We should have the diet of a God. And he said in his book that he gave us the herbs and the fruits and the vegetables as meat. Well. As meat. We begged God for meat, and he said, go on and eat it, now it's killing us. Our lifespan is real short. We begged God for a king when, when, when we didn't have a king. And you see what happens when you get somebody in office who think they're the king. Right? So I'm saying that what we got to do, okay, I'm going to read this quickly because I've got a habit of uh, really talking. <laughs> There's no cure or treatment for the virus. And I mentioned that. So we gotta take preventive measures. We gotta start eating and drinking more real fresh fruits and vegetables. Also, we gotta take vitamin and mineral supplements. Why is that? Because all our food is basically poison. We don't know which garden we in, the garden of Eden or the garden of evil. We don't know if it's Monsanto or who, right? And we shouldn't be eating any fruits or vegetables without seeds. Right. All right? All of those fruits and vegetables without seeds and all that other kind of franken food are for test tube babies and clones. Franken food. I said it's for test tube babies and clones. That means they done wrote us out. All right? So, all I'm saying is. We must boost our immune system. Your immune system are those white blood cells that provide security for your body. It fights off viruses, bacteria, and fungus that enters your body. We have to eat the food of the gods. The other food is killing us. This is why we were number one in all the diseases because we're eating the king's diet. Right. Right. Did you hear what I said? Right. That's why we number one. And that's why this virus takes us out because we have things that compromise our system. And so being number one, we will be the most likely to get the virus, right? So now we got to go back to our mother. You heard her talk about grandmother. Let me tell you about mother. Her name is Mother Earth. The one that produced for us all things for our food that we can eat. Even most of the animals that we eat, eat grass, beef, cows. What, what do they eat, meat? Most of them. You don't eat tigers and lions, do you? <laughs> they eat meat. See, 
So even chicken, they don't eat meat. So why would you eat a meat substitute? I mean, a vegetable substitute, where we could be eating our fruits, eating our vegetables, drinking our liquids. We, look, it's supposed to be another wave coming through. I call it a tsunami, all right? And the coronavirus, I call it the Frankenstein virus. I got it from a brother named Brother Aleem Muhammad. He called it a Frankenstein virus because the way they put Frankenstein together, they used body parts from many different people to make it live. And then it turned around and killed the maker. And so they got a virus they don't know nothing about because they put corona in it, they put SARS in it, they put MERS in it, they put tuberculosis in it, they put even the Spanish flu in it that they got from somebody that they dug up. And so now it done got out of hand. But we, the children of God, come back to mother. Come back to God. Come back to the one that holds the key, not only just to our liberation, but to our lifespan being expanded. You're given 120 years. Don't you want it? Yes. Then let's change our diet. And let's eat the food of the gods that we are supposed to be. See, we call ourselves God. What's up, God? What's up, God? But we don't act nothing like a God. You're supposed to walk like a God. You're supposed to talk like a God. You're supposed to stand like a God. You're supposed to look in someone's eyes and they're supposed to see who? I'm telling you like it is. I'm going to shut up. I saw a little sign go up. <laughs> I just noticed it, believe it or not. <laughs> hey, quickly. Just like our body has an immune system or a security system, we need a security system in our communities. We need a hospitality patrol to secure our residents. We must and should monitor police actions and serve as a buffer between the police and the community. We need to monitor the activity of foreign store owners that sell expired canned goods and spoiled meats to our people. If we don't do this, brothers and sisters, who will? Nobody, Nobody can save us from us, for us, but us. I'm the OMIB, Temple of Mercy Association. If you want to be a part of this hospitality patrol, see me. Peace, yeah. people. just heard another actionable step. If you want to be a part of the hospitality patrol, see Minister Rahim. ABJ and uh, Toma, we work very closely together and we will be doing public safety and peace building in our own community. We will not follow the lead of anybody else for public safety. We are doing public safety ourselves and we have been doing it for quite a while, by the way. So if you throw of any young men that wouldn't man patrol in our community, because all this stuff sounds real good. And it's very possible, but we're going to have to have all hands in, all hands on deck. This is it now. We got to all band together to do this thing. So we didn't have this on the program, but I'm going to ask, I'm, I'm asking Brother Officer uh, Lee if he would come before us. It is very, very, very important that we create our own images and we tell our own stories and we have our own narratives. And I am convinced that all police and all uh, law enforcement is not bad. I work with them every month and I have done so for probably, I think, the last maybe 10 years. And the CAPS meetings have been held here probably the last 15 years. And I know that there are many people in the community and there are many officers that really genuinely care. And I am not two-faced. I said that earlier. I'm not going to pretend, I mean, be your friend today. And then when the heat come, now I'm not, then I'm, then I got to turn my back on you. Now, if you're doing wrong, as I said, that's different. But I know that we have amongst us officers that really genuinely care. And like the young lady said, uh, Tatiana, we'd like to see our own officers well-trained, well-trained, and ready to work hand-in-hand -hand with us. 
Again, this was not on the schedule, but I believe it's in order that we would have Officer Lee, because I know I haven't heard from any black officer since this happened, or, 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 or any of the latest events. So I would love to hear um, a special greeting from Officer Lee. So let's just uh, um, receive him with love, and let's receive him with Ashe. Ashe! All right. Thank you, All right, I'm gonna see how this is gonna work. Um, I appreciate you, Pastor Brady, um, bringing me up here. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna go into a debate as to the relations of the police and those components, but um, I'm here, one, standing as a man, also standing as a black man, and all, first and foremost, as a man of God, um, we are standing um, here. Um, I thank God for uh, Pastor Brady uh, with this idea um, of coming together and bringing unity um, to this community uh, because we believe that God is a God of unity and not separation. Um, so we are, are definitely in agreement with you um, that there has to be unity within this community. Um, and I like what was just said um, as it relates to um, our community um, being accountable and responsible and policing um, our own communities. Um, because it's important and it's, it's really important for us um, as parents, as community members. Um, and w when I was growing up, um, everybody was your parent. And um, the outcome of many things came out differently. Um, I grew up in the hood. I'm from the hood. I'm from the west side. Um, so I, I know what was going on. Everybody I knew was a gang member. Um, I knew exactly what was going on. but. Um, uh, because of uh, the community, because of uh, what we represented, um, things went different in my line. So um, I'm here just to say that I'm, I'm with you. I'm praying with this community, and we do that on the regular. She attends our meetings, and I always talk about that, and that's something that we have on our agenda as it relates to the community to be out here and a presence for the community and to pray for you guys. Um, and, and I'm not just praying for you. I'm praying for me because I... Um, I, I put on these clothes, um, but I'm still black, I'm still breathing, I'm still bleeding um, at the same thing as you are. So um, I come and do a job and do what I have to do, um, but at the end of the day, um, uh, my children are, are living in the community. Uh, my, my wife, my family um, is in the black community, so I, I feel like it's important for me to represent the police department in a different way. And my perspective is, that um, we can protest and we can say many things on the outside, um, but the best way to make a change within um, this element is to be within the element. Uh, so, and that's what I'm about, and that's what I do on a daily basis that I'm going to represent um, this, uh, my, myself, my community, I'm gonna represent my race, um, but I'm gonna represent the police department in a whole different perspective. Uh, so that's what you see here today. And um, if anybody is willing to join me, um, I, I'm willing to help um, in that cause. Um, we need more of us doing what I'm doing here today. Uh, we got a lot of our sisters over here. They're standing with us as well. Um, but that's, that's our goal, is to, to do what we can to make a difference and make a change from the inside. Uh, the best thing to do and best way to do it is from the inside because um, the only way that people are going to listen is that you're inside representing something um, and, and outwardly. So um, I appreciate you, Pastor Brady, for doing this. I'm standing with you. Um, anything that you know, you know that anything that she do or any members that in this community that are doing, she know that I'm there. She know that I'm, I'm, I'm fully involved um, in what's going on. So. Um, I thank you all for being here. I thank you all for talking about the health component um, because that is important. Um, that's something that we lack in our community as well. And um, that's something that takes us out and that's what people want to happen. Um, so if we don't have um, good things and good um, nourishment and things like that, uh, we're bound for destruction. So um, I, I applaud you guys for talking about that and all of the things that, um, that everybody has been talking about. Uh, we need a change. We need a change within our community. We need a change within our um, city. We need a change within our nation and within the world. And I believe with the help of God, 
that we can do that and in our unity that we have, we stand together, that we'll be able to make that change. I thank you all and we'll be here with you. See, see what I'm talking about, how the enemy always trying to interfere? He don't want that, but that message is carrying. That message is carrying. That message is ringing. That remind me of, and I saw it in the press release, the original version, and it, and it took me back. This really, 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 really reminds me of Officer Friendly. That was the best thing in school. That was the, when Officer Friendly would show up. And he always looked like me, he always looked like us. And we used to have such a good time with Officer Friendly. So there's some things that we have that we can recapture, that some things that we can go back and reclaim, that we can captivate and bring it up to the present. So thank you, Officer Lee. And again, ABJ stands with you. We stand for our community. We stand for our people. So Village, I'm saying this to anyone that may still be listening on Facebook or listening anywhere. We want you to know that we put this program together with you in mind. That's why you heard so many different perspectives because we understand we've listened to you. We are listening to you and we know we need a lot. We know we have a long way to go. We know we have much to do, but we also understand that it's going to take all the generations working together, all of us in unity, and we also know that we have the victory. So we wanted to reach you today, our people, to let you know that things are well in the village. We are alive and well in the village. We have really come to the close of the program of understand that a few of you would like to have short comments. And so we're going to allow for short comments. Get the sand ready, Deborah. Come to the front center. We're going to do like they do at the home, going pull you by your coattail. Because we have already held the people for almost two hours. But at the same time, this is our chance to, and our time to deposit. This is our time to share. And we were gonna do a village walk, so I'm gonna ask the other organizers of, the, of, the, um, of this event, National Black Agenda Consortium, TAX, uh, African Development Plan, TOMA, INCOBRA, and um, I don't wanna miss anyone, and all of the others. And, and by the way, I do wanna say that we have our black media out tonight. We have Wanda Carter, and that's CN, what is it, CCN? Yes, thank you so much for coming, and Brother Haroon from the Nation of Islam, we have known these two soldiers for many, many years, and they have been super supportive. And I really appreciate Brother Richard Bahamut, my great, great friend. He and I have done so many things together, and I'm going to ask you to pray for him and his health and his wellness. We're winding down, but I'm asking the other organizers, because I kind of like the feel of what's happening here. So, yeah, I'm thinking that we can just circle it up, but also, Rather than, to do the, rather than to do the walk, there are people here that want to say something. And, and, and because we don't want any more broken glass, and that's where that broken, to me, that's what the broken glass represents. It, it means you didn't listen to me, so hear this. You didn't listen to what I had to say, so hear this. Hear the broken glass. So I think that we should allow, if you all would agree with me, for short comments from those that are amongst us. Would that be okay in lieu of the walk? Because it's not a one-stop night, night hit. We got to come back and do more of this. This is not a one-time thing. And that's the other thing we want you to know in the village, that we don't think that we've done something today, that we've done something so great. Do it one time and go back and you don't see us again. We do positive loitering with the police department all the time. And some of you know it's true because you've seen us out there. So we're going to have a short solo because you know the melanin in the skin. We love the music. We got that melanin going on. And then we're gonna offer, but I'm gonna ask our brothers and sisters that we are gonna allow to speak to please be respectful because again, we have been out here for quite a while. Make your key point. We can't get it all in one night. We cannot. So Deborah, come on and give us a beautiful song to help us rise, help us to rise up. And then we're gonna open it up for short comments. And um, thank you, thank you for staying with us. All right.
Thank you, Victoria. There's been such a wealth of wisdom on this on today. I'm going to sing a song to you that I hope encourages your heart and emboldens you to take actionable steps. And when you hear the chorus, if you know it, feel free to join in and feel free to rise. You're broken down and tired of living on the merry-go-round and you can't find the fire but I see it in you and we're gonna walk it out it out. tell y'all something. I'm sorry, I just got to tell you this. I gave her vocal lessons. I'm her vocal coach. <laughs> just kidding. She's the director of arts and education for ABJ Community Services and Prophetess Jacqueline is the director of outreach. So this is part of our core team. The ABJ Millennials, why don't y'all wave y'all hands. Look around you all. The ABJ Millennials are out here some others would, uh, went to other protests that I understand going on about the CPD. So our young people are out doing their thing. We want to thank each and every one of you. Sister Cecile, I don't want to, um, you, I think you might be the only organizer that helped put this together. We're wrapping it up. We're pretty much done. But I think you might be the only organizer that did not have something to say. And I really would love if you could just come and greet us, even if you just give us a reflection on what you just saw. And, and, and I'm going to ask everybody else to just kind of gather around because we're going to hear from the community. We're going to hear from you, and then we're going to wrap it up. Come on, Sister Cecile. Let's give it up for Sister Cecile. And then we will open it up to the community. 
We do want to thank our officers that uh, posted up. I got an attitude yesterday because I thought somebody was saying that they didn't have time for us in so many words. I should have known better, but you see how people try to say stuff to irritate you. But our officers are out here. We see you over there, officers. Thank you so much. We see you, and we need you all. We need you in the righteous way. So stay safe, stay strong, and let's be one community. Good evening. I just want to say I love you. Right? Because that's what we need right now. We need to just love each other. And some of the things that are happening are forcing us to be apart. And that's not what we need as a community. We have to always remember our African self. And our African self is Ubuntu, right? I am because you are. So we have to remember that. And we have to remember that the things that we have to do have to be about what we feel inside, not necessarily what other people tell us. I really want to tell you that I love you because I feel so much love being here today, right? Um, these young people that we've observed for a while, because we've been here before with Sister Victoria and seen how you all are just growing up so nicely, and that warms my heart. Um, those of us who've been in the movement a long time, I'm a human rights defender, I've been an activist all of my 40-something years here, um, we want to know we can pass that baton on. And when we look at the young people who have come up here today and the things that they have said, it's, qu it's quite clear to me that we got some people we can pass the baton onto, right? And in our community, we have to really remember that. We have to remember that the young people need our support. We need more young people challenging things. We need more young people develop for leadership and leadership in so many different fronts. This is such a pleasing thing to see that people came up, Sister Ya came up and talked about health, right? Um, Brother Rahim talked about the same thing, health, but also business and economics. People, money is the blood of a nation, right? We got to have some too, right? So economics is real, economics is real. And, um, and all of us here have gifts, and what we want to be able to do is to develop those gifts so that that can then be your source of your income and your economics, right? And, and then we can build a healthy community. So today, um, we were testifying for the city, um, with the city, about the reparations. And I'm a data person, so what I do is, is tell the story in pictures about connecting the dots. And, and, and that's something I want to be able to, to hand on to young people, begin to teach them how to do that. Um, I'll be designing more stuff as it relates to leadership development um, and looking at the continent and building those relationships because the reason we are so fragmented is because they got them figuring, uh, you know, having the same, they have the same identity crisis we have, right? Um, yesterday we were talking to some young people and they were telling me about um, their impression of Africans. Listen, folks, all of us are the same. Right? So don't let other people separate us because of where you think somebody comes from. Um, you got to stop this. We are all African people. And when things are happening to us, they don't ask you what your nationality is before they bust you upside your head. So you got to really stop this thing. Get a chance to know each other. Introduce yourself to someone else. Right? Begin to talk through your differences. I would love to see us begin to circle up here because we could actually circle up outside. Right? Um, and, and just begin to share. Uh, when I heard the young people speak about their fears um, and the things that were bothering them, it broke my heart. And then there was a lady who gave a story that even broke my heart even more. I can't share that right now, but the bottom line is, um, young people, um, we feel you. Like Cam said, without your actions, right, they wouldn't be trying to move the agenda for reparations even closer, right? So there's a whole lot of positive that have come out of this, right? And that's how you need to see it. You need to stop letting other people shape what you think is happening, but look and see what's really happening, right? So I love you, I love you, I love you, and I want to thank you, and I want to thank Sister Victoria for always being that spirit that wants to bring us together to do something. Yeah. I'm about action too, right? Um, and if we have something uh, like this on a continuous basis, like now we're moving into the summer, um, I definitely would support that, you know? So thank you all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah.
If you feel good, let me hear you say, I feel good. I feel good. If you feel strong, let me hear you say, let me hear you say, I feel strong. I feel strong. If you happy, you black, let me hear you say, love. Love. I bet. So look, we finna do this affirmation real quick. So I know we've been chilling real quick this just to give us a little energy to leave off like uh, my brother said earlier with a little fire. So really, if you can, I need for you to stand and follow me with your actions and follow me with your word. You're the first person to stand. And you got a cast on your foot. Thank you, mama. Thank you. So listen, wherever you at, even if, even if you're listening from inside of your house right now, I want you to say this affirmation with us. I want you to sit, stand with us. So this affirmation was given to me by one of my uh, leaders and it helped to prevent violence for over, for over, at least over four years at Open Mic we did every Tuesday. Let's get it. Ha! Ha! I was checking, I was checking, I hear y'all, y'all ain't even ready for it. Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha Power! Power! All my, All my brothers and, brothers and sisters. sisters. Must come, together must come together to free ourselves, to free, ourselves, to free our hood, to free our hood and, to free our world. and to free our world. Even if you got a mask on, I still want to see your, your mask moving. <laughs> All my, All my brothers, and brothers and sisters and sisters, 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 will come together. We'll come to free ourselves, to free our hood, where your physiology at, to free our hood, actionable, to free our hood, and to free our world. All my, All my brothers and, brothers and sisters, sisters have come together. Have come together. Look at, us. Look at 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 us. We free ourselves. We free ourselves. We free our hood. We free our hood. And we free our world, Joe. And we free our world, Joe. So if I eat, if I eat, then you eat. Then you eat. If I love myself, if I love myself, then I can love you. Then I can love you. Ashe, 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 Man, make sure you get somebody a little fist pump real quick. So next up, you say we finna call Miss Brady up, Mama Brady. Thank you, Mama Brady, for everything you have been doing for us. I appreciate you so much. And she finna call up and help organize us for our community portion. See, that's what happened when the young folk take over. Yeah. Woo, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. And um, we gonna, we got a couple of brothers up here that are gonna come up and make some comments and a couple of sisters that also approached me. I, I do wanna do this though, because I wanna make sure I'm in order. Our brother Yusufu, I know you did the libation, but I want you to know that we appreciate you, brother Yusufu. Yeah. We appreciate you very, very much. Yeah. Dr. Gail, my so, show enough soul sister in the battle, in the struggle. Yeah. Sister Cecile, my show enough soul sister. Yeah. Minister Prophetess Jacqueline, my show enough sister, 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 soul sister. <laughs> De Deborah Ross, my sister, sister, my singing sister. Sister Yah, she's still here. Our epidemiologist sister. <laughs> Big Mama here, y'all. Big Mama's here. All of Toma. All of the organizers, everyone that helped make this happen, our neighbors that have come out. Did I miss any media? All right, so we're gonna transition into the community component. Okay, okay, Dr. Gail is gonna do, uh -huh. we're gonna do it right, well let's okay. do, you know what, let's do one community person. I'll keep, make sure they keep it short, then you pray. That's what I'm saying. Oh, so, however okay. you want to do. That's okay, what okay. Saying. All right, so my sister just gave another thing that is in order that we'll do, but we're going to ask Brother, what's your name again, baby? Lionel Nixon. 
Brother Lot, and you know I know, I just came, it's been some years since I saw you. But I, I know exactly who you are. Brother Nixon is going to come up. This is our community component. So we're going to hear what some of our community members want to say to us. We're asking everyone to kind of get, get to your main point. And then we're going to have a special prayer by Dr. Gail Frazier. She's come up to me and she pointed out, which is correct, that we must pray for our officers. So we want the officers to stand back for a few more minutes and then we're going to have that prayer. Come on, Brother Nixon. You. you all may be seated. I say, I'm going to make this very short. As I stand out here, I see many people I work with in this community. Uh, I happen to be the uh, international and Chicago correspondent for the Chicago Communicator News Media. And I wanted to encourage you all to support the black press. Because when we get the call, we come out. Now, I. I'm on Facebook. I have 3,000 pages and 3,000 groups. And when I leave here tonight, whenever, she, whenever our publisher, Wanda Carter, finishes processing this, I'm going to get this out all over the country. The last thing I want to say is I am also proud to tell you that I am the President Emeritus of the Coalition to Save South Shore Country Club Park. And I was put in by the late Henry English after he left, and I was the person that was there when the South Shore Country Club got saved from demolition. So I want to leave you with this thought. I know what it takes to organize, and I know when they say, tell you what you can't do, I just love when people talk, talk about what we can't do, but we can do. Hello, how y'all doing? Hello. Woo. If you got kids, raise your hand. Okay, if you know somebody with kids, raise your hand. Okay, that means I need support from all of y'all because everybody here has kids. Um, last week when I found out CPS had stopped the distribution of meals, I decided that I wanted to um, just make meals for the community for the kids. Um, but because of the love and the community um, that I've received, this has turned into something much bigger. I was just going to do it for two days, but I raised over $3,000. So I um, am pouring into next week and we'll be doing it. So far, we've given away almost 400 meals to kids. So next week, a school is going to be sponsoring me on Tuesday and they are open to the public to come. They're going to have care packages. I'll have food. We have fruit and all type of different things in that bag so please 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 if you have children um, please uh, connect with me I'm chef Chanel on Instagram so I look forward to feeding y'all kids um, it's all about just community and I just want to give the kids a moment to just um, take a deep breath it's a lot of going on it's a lot going on um, kids are scared um, some of them don't have a chance to debrief or de-stress so I believe that food is medicine and I believe that food can bring all type of things about if we are talking about in regards to mental health so to keep our kids well let's feed them well please reach out to me so I can feed your kids Tuesday and Thursday of next week thank you I'm Dr. Ross. First, let me apologize for being late. But you know, uh, I look at the crowd, and the crowd is enough. You know, Jesus changed the world with 12, they say. So all we always look up for numbers. Take the numbers that you got and use them with strength. Right. I'm from the Butt Naked Truth. I'm the one you hear on the radio, TV. I be with Miss Wanda on her show. I be on a lot of shows and a lot of radio shows and a lot of TV. The mask, the water, the hand sanitizer not going to save you. The creator is. You done took your faith out of God and put it in some foolishness that they selling you at the store. When the trucks stop running up and down the highway, then you get worried. Every time you empty the shelf, they re they replenish you. We're not paying attention. The reason we can't protect our women and children is because our community is not paying attention. Paying attention is a compound word. You pay with your life or you pay with your time, but you must pay. Every officer is not a bad officer, but the ones that are, we're going to root them out. The unity. We don't, guns, we don't make them. The rest of the mess come to our community. 
but we can make unity. If I hold one finger up, you can break it. If I hold my fist up, it's power. If you ain't talking about sticking together, staying together, and that entitled, de de uh, that entitled deficit we have in our community where everybody need a title, no, you don't. You're all leaders. When you look in the mirror, you see you. That's why Michael Jackson said, the man in the mirror. He said, they're going to be coming after me. They don't really care about us. But everybody hear the, the songs, but they don't understand them. You don't understand the lyrics. It's art to listening. That's why you got two ears and one mouth. When the ears stand up, the mouth sit down. But I ain't going to hold y'all hostage because it's my fault I was late. But the next time we come together, I'll be there. And if I don't, you hold me accountable. That's the problem with our accountability in our community. It brings responsibility. Don't nobody want to be accountable so they duck down and hide behind you. We 40 carry cowards. You got 60,000 women missing. Ain't nobody talking about it. You traded off on sex travel, but they still in organs. And you got cowards them to be around their families as we stand in the gap and make up the heads. You said one to chase a thousand, two to put ten thousand to flight, and the threefold cord is not easily broken. Lord, we thank you and praise you that you are moving in the midst of this situation and anything that's attacking them in any kind of way, we curse it to the root. We bind up every principality, every ruling spirit, every demonic stronghold that will come against their lives in Jesus' name. We curse the hand of death and destruction, every stray bullet, every intentional bullet, all assassinations, we curse it right now in Jesus' name. And we loose the hand of God to rest upon them. And we speak life, man of God, we speak life. We speak life, woman of God. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for lifting up a standard in this city and lifting up a standard in this hour. And Lord, we bless them and we release them to do what you have called them to do before the foundation of the world. And Lord, we praise you for doing a great and mighty work in and through them. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ that I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, come on. There let's you go. Ourselves. Hallelujah. Praise let's God. celebrate ourselves. Ubuntu. 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 That just simply means I am because you are Ubuntu. Ubuntu. That means I am because you are Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Thank you and be safe going home. We love you.